already won their first round games. But is that enough satisfaction? Do these young players know you can't always get what you want? Will these teams be shattered? Or is the next step to a championship just a shot away? Enough questions. It's time to... For players on eight teams today, a trip to the Sweet 16 is on the line, and three words are on their lips. Start me up. Greg Gumbel, welcome to the road to the Final Four as CBS Sports proudly continues its 20th consecutive year covering the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Tournament. Today, eight more games that will narrow the field to this year's Sweet 16. And I am joined by my partner, the Earl of Alliteration, Clark Kellogg. Earl, what do you see today? <laughs> Good morning, Greg. Look back to yesterday. The only lower-seeded team to win was USC, a number six seed. I think potential surprises could lurk in the three-six matchups today. If Temple shoots as well as they did against Texas, they've got a chance. And Notre Dame's overall shooting balance could pose problems for Mississippi. You were pretty much on the mark yesterday. Congratulations. Well, thank you, sir. My pleasure. Coming up today's first game in the Midwest region, number five Syracuse takes on number four Kansas at the Dayton Arena. Four games will come your way beginning at 2.15 Eastern time. Indiana State meets Gonzaga in a 12-13 matchup. Butler tests number two Arizona. Temple wrestles with the third-ranked Gators from Florida. Charlotte challenges Illinois, the top seed in the Midwest. Then at about 4.45 Eastern time, our triple header games kick in. Fresno State goes against defending national champ Michigan State. Notre Dame squares off against number three Ole Miss. Penn State tangles with number two North Carolina. Now, eight teams have already advanced to the Sweet 16. Let's begin in the East, where Duke will take on UCLA, and Kentucky will battle Southern Cal. The Trojans held off Boston College yesterday. And now they need a three. 7.5. Here comes the Big East Co-Player of the Year. Harley down the lane. The runner now. Coming down on that on that last play, uh, Coach Skinner said, um, "I mean, take a look, but also, I mean, go to the basket. How, the way they it was playing a three-point line, I guess, kind of gave me an initial reaction to get into the basket." I mean, let's not get carried away with one play. And the, the the philosophy of what my team is that if there's time left on the clock, we can always take the ball. If we're down three, we all, I'd rather get a good shot than a bad shot. Stanford against St. Joe's. Stanford's Casey Jacobson driving to the bucket for the lay-in here. St. Joe's Marvin O'Connor to the bucket, two of his 37. But St. Joe's hopes for victory faded when he fouled out. A standing ovation. Even the Stanford fans <laughs> are on their feet for Marvin O'Connor. What an amazing player. That was one of the most hardest working efforts I've ever had on defense, and he still lit me up for 40. I tried everything I could, but that, that is just an amazing talent, an amazing player. So Stanford advances. The Cardinal will take on Cincinnati in Anaheim. Maryland will meet Georgetown in the other West Regional Semifinal. And we will continue on the road to the Final Four after this word from your local station. Second round action in the Midwest region about to tip off between Syracuse and Kansas. Tim Brando and Rick Pitino are standing by to call the game. Clark and I will keep you up to date on all the tournament action throughout the day. Enjoy the games here on CBS. CBA Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Michelob Light, Blue from American Express, Monroe, and by Volvo. CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four brings you to Dayton, Ohio, home to the Wright brothers, flying high as uh, the outstanding Kansas Jayhawks of the Big 12 Conference take on from the Big East, the Syracuse Orangemen. Here you see the bracketing in the Midwest region, both higher seeds advancing and uh, 
Illinois and Charlotte coming up later. Hello, everyone. Tim Brando by my side. Rick Patino, two perennial tournament powers. What do you anticipate today? Well, these two legendary programs will duke it out in an up-tempo up basketball game. Can Kansas beat Syracuse's zone up the floor before they set up, make their threes? Can Syracuse attack that front court of Kansas and get them in foul trouble? The lineups for these two teams. Jim Beheim's club looks this way. Shumpert's always a key factor. Damone Brown, Jeremy McNeil, Deshaun Williams, the X factor for the team, and the steadying influence of Griffin. Collison, Gregory, Gooden, Boshi, and Heinrich going for Kansas. And Jim Beheim, he's uh, third now among active coaches for tournament victories behind only Krzyzewski and uh, Lute Olson, tied for that honor with Jerry Tarkanian, each of whom have 32 tournament wins. And Roy Williams in his 13th year. A veteran who's been to two Final Fours. In fact, they have that in common. Both have been to the Final Four twice. In case of uh, Bayheim, he has uh, played in the championship on both occasions. David Hall, Duke Edsel, and uh, Dick Cartmel are officials for this afternoon's game. Jim Bayheim coming off his 600th win in coaching. Yeah, a big one. The uh, card-carrying Orangeman fans are on hand. Deshaun Williams could be the X factor in today's game. And talking with Syracuse, they really believe that he's not played his best in the last month. And when you can add him to Brown and Shumpert, can make a big difference, particularly off the bounce. This time off the front rim, Williams can't hit. And the quick outlet to Heinrich. Kansas will push it on every possession. Well, the Manwich front line, uh, that's what we'll be watching today. Unbelievable first game, 23 points by Nick Collison, 18 by Kenny Gregory, and Drew Good now back making the Kansas Jayhooks that much stronger with 20 points. And all three bring a really a different strength to the game for KU. There's the famous 2-3 zone. All five people react with each pass. There's a bump by Brown on the alley-oop pass to Gooden. First foul against Damone, the senior from Buffalo. One of Kansas's Syracuse weaknesses in the 25, pass going against the zone is can first, they make the perimeter shot consistently throughout the game? With the talent they have on this floor, they certainly can. Boshi off the bounce. Jeff Boshi, the junior, Valley City, North Dakota, makes it a 3 0 Kansas lead. If you give him time, he'll make that shot. You have to smother him on the perimeter. Brown off the curl. Pull down by Gregory, and again the Jayhawks look to push. Gooden has his pocket pick by Preston Shumpert. Shumpert is silky smooth, one of the better one-on-one -on -one players in this tournament. Deshaun Williams. Well, he's taken two quick shots for the Orangemen. They're hoping to get him off to a quality start, as we mentioned. There's that very active zone that uh, Roy Williams is really admiring coming in. Gooden takes it to the rack and is fouled. Jeremy McNeil gets his first. Syracuse foul number 34, Jeremy McNeil, his first, team second. Here's the move by Gooden. He fakes the pass, goes up for the power jam. It's challenged, and there's the foul. See, Syracuse is not used to necessarily moving their feet in the zone. They react with their hands, and they read the eyes of the passer. It's essential that their hands are active on every possession. Well, you see the numbers in the first round win against Cal State Northridge. Remember, he missed an extended period of time late in the season due to an injured wrist. Now, Kansas had to get accustomed to having him back in the lineup. He missed much of the month of February. Collison on the offensive glass. The finger roll and the follow by Gooden. Six nothing Jayhawks. Not quite two minutes gone here in Dayton. Little, little half court trap. They'll run and jump. Syracuse have to attack the middle. Give Kansas a free shot. Alan Griffin really been the glue to this team out of Brooklyn, New York. Veteran player. Always composed. Count it and a foul. They had a help defense, did not see the ball. They were concentrating too much on their man, never never saw the basketball. Mochi picks up the foul. Everybody rotating over late. Going for the three-point play. 
for Syracuse, number 35. You must see them when you're playing man or zone, it's the same principle. You have to react to the basketball. Alan Griffin shooting. Alan Griffin leads the team in minutes. Plays over 37 minutes per game, Rick. I gotta ask you, the fact that they play zone, does that help in that regard? Without question. They get back into it on transition, they get back into it on a made bucket, and they don't have to extend as much energy. The high low pass. Collison, yes, and a foul. This is this is where you beat a zone. You look to the middle of the floor. You beat all full court pressure by attacking the middle. Here it is. They go high and then back down into the low post. That's how you beat a zone defense. If you're going to beat full court pressure, you attack the middle of the court. Billy Selick just into the game picked up the foul, known to be foul prone, and the senior in for five seconds picks up the foul. We talked about Griffin and the minutes he plays in conference play in the Big East, better than 39 minutes, and you see Kansas owning the glass early. Selick. Maybe a travel first, came off the pick and roll. So the open man inside, he hesitated, waiting for the shot block to come in. He's got to go up right away strong. Kirk Heinrich does get the foul, as called by David Hall underneath. You'll notice he hesitates here, looking at the defense. Jessup, Pennsylvania. The home of Billy Sillett. Pulled down by Gooden. Gregory trying to get loose on the wing. Well, he got inside the zone there. Beautiful runner by Kenny Gregory. Well, you look to either dribble, penetrate the seam, or by skip passing it, getting it to the high post. Off the ball, a foul spotted underneath. That'll go against uh, Drew Gooden. Here's Kenny Gregory going right at the seam. Knifes through and puts it in. Another look at a different angle. He sees the seam. Good block out by the interior post player. Deshaun Williams triggers it in for Syracuse. Kansas comes with the zone on the underneath out of bounds play. Let's see if Syracuse now, who plays zone each day against their zone, let's see how good they are offensively. Shumpert. Gregory did not rotate as quickly as uh, perhaps Roy Williams would have liked. Not bad. Syracuse is... Syracuse has to understand how to play against the zone. Probably 80% of their practice. Early shooting. Kansas has only missed once from the floor, and the Orangemen beginning to warm up. Heinrich trying to cut inside that zone, lost it on the way through. See how active their hands are in the zone. A leaner by Griffin. Double clutching, but out of bounds. Last touch by the Jayhawks. Let's see if Kansas stays in the 2-3 zone now on the underneath out of bounds play. They stay with it. Well, Roy Williams commented that it's one of the most unique zones, and people think of uh, Temple and uh, the matchup zone of John Cheney. But really since 96, Rick, when you played Syracuse in the championship game, the Orangeman zone defense has been very unique and one of the most highly thought of in college basketball. Shepard's shot won't go. Gregory rips it down. You'll notice the opposite guard is going to defend the high post. That's the key to a 2-3 zone. Excellent bounce pass entry. Oh, and then a whirling dervish by Drew Gooden. He has five of the Jayhawks' 13. How about that bounce pass by Heinrich? This is the best Kansas team for attacking the zone I've seen in the last seven, eight years. Shepard, too strong. Bochi in the backcourt with Heinrich. The court vision outstanding for this Jayhawks team. Gregory on the wing. Selick pulls it down. He may see a lot of playing time today with that size of the Manwich front line. Griffin. In traffic, gives it up to Damone Three Brown. seconds. He hasn't come out of the three-second lane yet. There's the organized break three on one. Heinrich. Well, it's about all that Syracuse could do in a three on one situation. That's a good foul by Alan Griffin. It is, but the Orange offensive foul, player has to give Alan it up. Griffin, his first, team's fourth. Here's the break. You have to give the ball up now and turn it into a two-on-one. Three-on-one is not a good offensive break. Advance the basketball, turn it into a two-on-one. Three-on-one, the defensive man will just go back into the rim and try to draw the offensive foul. 
for Kansas, number 44. Eric Genoweth comes into the game. All five Kansas starters have now scored. With Heinrich at the free throw line. Deshaun Williams also sits down for the Orangemen. Quest Wayne's come in for him. Jayhawks getting it done on the glass. Out rebounding the Orangemen 10 2. They lead by eight early on in Dayton, Ohio. Let's take a look now, Coach Patino, at the Fidelity Investments' keys to success for both teams. Well, for Syracuse, they have to negate the tremendous front, front court scoring in Kansas, and they have to limit Kansas's three-point shots in the zone. For Kansas, they got to beat the zone down the floor. They can't go half court every possession, and they got to control the offensive glass. I think we've already seen an example of uh, Kansas doing just that. They've had a number of break opportunities. They're one of the best organized fast break teams in college basketball. Here they come back out with a 1-3-1 zone. West Dwayne on the 1-3-1 the will leave the corners open for the three. Griffin, too strong, pulled down by Chenoweth. Syracuse is not a great outside shooting team. Deshaun Williams is inconsistent, and that's probably their major weakness. Collison, Chenoweth, Gregory, Boshi, and Heinrich on the floor for KU. Heinrich, patient. Keep it alive for Chenoweth down low, and there's the contact by Selick. So two quick fouls picked up by Billy, the senior from Jessup, Pennsylvania. Be it zone or man, you cannot allow a backcourt player to go all the way on the top of the perimeter and get to the rim. You have to step up and trap the ball. Well, a reminder for complete Sweet 16 preview, including in-depth head-to-head matchups and analysis. Go to the Internet's home of college basketball at cbs.sportsline.com or AOL keyword CBS Sportsline. This Kansas team, I believe, has a better chance to get to the Final Four than more talented teams they've had in the past. There is absolutely no pressure on this basketball team at all. Nobody expects them to go to the Final Four, and they have the goods to do it. Well, the second round has been awfully unkind to Roy Williams of late. Five straight years, five straight opportunities popped out in the second round. 17-7, our score, 10-point game. Interesting enough that Roy Williams stays with the zone. When both teams figure don't press a pressing team, other coaches feel you should press a pressing team. Here Roy Williams is throwing the zone right back at Jim Beheim, saying, you cannot shoot the outside shot. We're going to sit in the zone. That's the first turnover committed by Syracuse. But they have had trouble on the boards, and that's something that they were really concerned with and generally always are because of the zone. Collison keeping alive. Chenoweth. Oh, look at that. Like human pogo sticks the Jayhawks underneath on the offensive glass. Best way to beat a zone is to offensive rebound, keep the ball alive because it's not good block out position. Gooden, Collison, and Gregory all with three rebounds each. Not quite seven minutes deep into the opening half. Excellent pass by Williams to Damone Brown. Number 25, Damone Brown. That's what you have to do. If you drive the middle, the baseline will always be open in the zone because the big man has to step up. That was uh, Jim Beheim's wife, Julie, that you saw just moments ago. She was the one handing out the 600 cards after the victory the other night against Hawaii. There's the dump down. When the ball goes to the corner, with the zone offense at Kansas, Syracuse will trap Jayhawks from the wing three, and from the Brett top Ballard, and then look for the steal. Brett Ballard comes into the game replacing Heinrich. He calls it his 24 trap out of the 2-3 zone. I know that. It was 25 years ago. The imaginative Jim Beheim has still not changed his calls. <laughs> well, he hasn't changed his address. Of course, that's something you can't relate to. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Bobby Boucher. <laughs> uh, well, from Boucher to Bochy, as Bochy puts it in on the wing. All those roots, be it New York, Boston, or Louisville. We'll be back. <laughs>
We mentioned these proud perennial powers in the NCAA tournament. Back to 96, West Regional Final in Denver. Jacques Vaughn's last shot would not fall, and the Orangemen of Syracuse, led by John Wallace, got Jim Beheim back to the Final Four. Tim Ryan and our dear, dear friend uh, Al McGuire got to dance at game's end. Uh, Jimmy Beheim, of course, very successful at it, quietly taking on the role of uh, senior statesman now in college basketball. Kansas with that team of Pollard, LaFrance, Jacques Vaughn, and the great Paul Pierce, and didn't go to the Final Four, but this team has it together right now, live candidate for the Final Four, but they've got to get by this orange zone today. Shepard, well, they'll need that shot to fall to have any chance. They're now four for 13 from the floor, and as a team, Syracuse is one for five from downtown. Ochi can't hit. Kansas is dominating the glass with 15 to two on the glass. That's something that they have to negate. There's the push off by the offensive player with his left arm and no call. Gregory, Boshi, Collison, Ballard, and Chenoweth on the floor for Kansas. Now they always look opposite. Yeah, there it is. Bochi, long rebound. What a save by Collison, but Damone Brown picks it off as he was trying to trigger it to Gregory. Shepard falling away. Boy, every shot for Preston Shepard is challenged. Well, Kansas is very well schooled and had to step up. That time it was Boshi at only six feet tall. He steps up, puts his hands up, stops the man from penetrating. Well, the rebounding story that we touched on, how important it would be, and Kansas dominant in that area. That and Shepard being one for five. Williams with the pilfer and the foul by Ballard. All he could do in that sequence. That's a good foul. Don't, don't give it to Matador. Don't give the little wave where the referee loves to come out and go and one, and you give him the bucket. Foul him hard. Foul him legitimately and make sure you don't hurt anyone. Well, the young man, Brett Ballard, the junior from Hutchinson, Kansas, played at Hutchinson Junior College. He's been getting a lot more playing time than most walk-ons would at KU. Syracuse is going to have to do a better job of gang rebounding in the zone. The guards are going to have to come, come back to the backcourt and chase it on the glass. Monday on CBS, what's worse than an annoying father-in-law? Losing your annoying father-in-law. The manhunt begins on an all-new King of Queens, Monday on CBS. It's more annoying than a father-in-law is giving up second shots. If you're a coach, don't give up the second shot. That just is going to pay with three-point shots and easy buckets. Deshaun Williams hits the free throws. A 10-point spread with 10.50 remaining in Dayton, Ohio. Kansas lead by 10, the third member of our broadcast team, a true special teamer, Spencer Tillman. Spencer? Tim, if nothing else, the NCAA and their officials certainly are consistent. This is a game ball you're watching right here. So far in the tournament, a couple of coaches have reached milestones. Bob Huggins got win number 300, and Jim Beheim in a big win over Miami in the opening round got his career 600 win. Neither coach got a chance to keep the game ball. I'll tell you what, I'm not sure about you guys, but I'd like to keep the one that was in play when the horn blew, right, coach? Well, certainly, the NCAA right now doesn't make enough money up this tournament. CBS will have to renew its package. <laughs> Ballard is rejected. What a swat by Jeremy McNeil. Griffin on the other end misses the easy one. Terrific defense. He played the passing lane, didn't know whether to pass or shoot. Got caught up and in between. Left his feet too soon. I've got to ask you now, if you had gotten your 600, what would you have done? Because I know you could be unscrupulous at times. What would you have done to have gotten the game I ball? I have to be. Kentucky would have made sure I had that basketball. <laughs> Gregory. Great pass. Outstanding look. Gregory puts it in off the window. Kansas, surprisingly, is having an easy time attacking the Syracuse zone. Jumper. That's where he's deceptively quick. You, you've oftentimes said that he's uh, deceptive in style. Reminds some of Jamal Wilkes. Jamal Wilkes, a little bit of Clyde Frazier. He's silky smooth. He never gets too excited. You don't even think he's breaking a sweat, but he gets the job done. Chenoweth loses it out of bounds. CBS Sports coverage of the entire NCAA basketball tournament is interactive through Ultimate TV.
It's the job of the tandem at the top in the 2-3 zone to make sure the ball is not immediately passed to the high post. They're not doing a good job in that area. It's immediately going in there. Well, you see, Kansas will match up more out of their zone. They're not playing the basic 2-3. They're matching up out of it. Deshaun Williams, that line drive trajectory not falling early on for him. 0 for 5 from the floor. He's been inconsistent all year. They need him to get hot tonight. He's taken three shots from downtown. Come up empty off the front iron every time. Gooden gets the contact from McNeil. And we'll get to the strike. It's the job of the opposite backcourt player in the zone to stop the ball from going to the mid post area. Right now, Kansas is getting it inside too much. That will break down any zone. Damone Brown actually tagged for the foul. His second sixth team foul against the Orangemen. Nick Collison looks to come in off the free throw. Now, Drew Gooden, who told you about the wrist injury, played well against premium opponents in conference as well as out. Well, he's a big-time basketball player, both at the high school level, the collegiate level. He's multifaceted. He could do so many different things inside as well as outside. Ramon Brown does get the rebound. He's been uh, very quiet, Rick. Only two points and two boards on the day for Damone Brown. Well, we noticed that Syracuse is 22-0 when leading at halftime. They're going to have to pick it up here and get hot from the outside to make that reality. It's tough for them to play from behind, too, isn't it? Well, they won't come out of the zone. And that's something that's tough to chase people when you're down points in a zone situation. The dribble drive leads Griffin to an open jumper, and the three-point is just not falling. And on the overplay, the foul will go against Deshaun Williams. This is great scouting by the Kansas staff. You figure Syracuse plays a 2-3 zone. They're staying in the zone themselves, believing that Syracuse cannot beat it from the outside. It's outstanding strategy and scouting. He saw clearly that Boshi yes, had uh, position that time as Williams went over the top. Uh, Jeff Boshi, they have a website at Kansas, and most colleges do now. And the team photographer would tell you that on the Kansas basketball website, Jeff Boshi has the most requested photograph of any on the team. He's a quasi Backstreet Boys lookalike, and the uh, the co-eds just love to get uh, copies of pictures and many times request autographs of pictures of Boji. He is uh, one of the shorter players on the Jayhawks team, but clearly BMOC on the campus at Lawrence. Shumpert off the front rim, cleared by Collison. Goodness open up the floor. They'll look for ball reversal here. alley -oop. not there, disrupted by Shumpert. Deshaun Williams clears it. Numbers three on two for the Orangemen. Browns pull up. Oh, the iron unkind to Syracuse. And the follow foul, a bailout indeed. Great jump stop by Damone Brown. Jeff Oshie is second, team's fifth. 25-13. Roy Williams' defense has it going early on. Here are a current list of the coaching vacancies. Rick, any interest? Only one. Wow, breaking news as our coverage of the NCAA tournament continues. Seriously, though, Coach, uh, just, I one, was very serious. just one word, Louisville. What about it? Great school, great state, great president, athletic director. I'm very interested, obviously, in the job position right now. But my main focus is CBS University and the Final <laughs> Four. That's it. He knows he can't work with me forever. <laughs> It's been a lot of fun, though. I've really enjoyed the week. It, it, really, Tim, it's been a great experience for me, and if I could just get better with, with a better partner next week, <laughs> I would even enrich my experience. <laughs> Variety, always the spice of your life. <laughs> Cross-court pass to Deshaun Williams. Nice drive. Offensive foul. Player control will go against Williams. That's the second on Deshaun. You have to know that as an offensive basketball player that someone's going to be waiting for you underneath the rim. Foul now he's got to come to a jump stop Deshaun and pull Williams up. He does not. You have to come to a jump stop. Syracuse just shooting a paltry 23% from the floor. They've only connected on one three-point bomb and eight tries. Some uh, perspiration on the floor, so they'll sweep it up. 
So says David Hall. This is a young Kansas basketball team that lacks depth, but this is one of the better teams I've seen in a long time. They play so well together offensively and defensively. Collison was held, no call. Three on one to Gregory. McNeil with the rejection, but he did get Gregory with the body. Again, he beat the full court press by going to the middle of the floor, almost losing the ball, though. Number 34, Jeremy McNeil, his second, team's ninth. You'll watch it here, the look away pass, the block on the arm, it's a good call. Gregory shooting two for Kansas. Nine team fouls against the Orangemen. Almost in the double bonus of the Jayhawks. Well, you think of Kansas, you think of history, tradition, Fog Allen Fieldhouse, 30th appearance. They've made 12 straight, the two national titles going way back, 10 Final Fours in total. And uh, I know you feel, as I do, that Roy Williams, uh, the more you continue to make it to the NCAA tournament, the more you increase your chances of finally claiming the brass ring. Oh, they used to say that Lute Olsen had some early exits. And then finally in time, he got his championship, one of the premier coaches in the game. Roy Williams, one of the premier coaches in the game. He'll have that national championship in probably the next two or three years with this young basketball team. Kenny Gregory picks up the foul for KU. Jayhawks foul number 20, Kenny Gregory, his first, team six. Well, we all know, as Stamford almost found out last mm -hmm. night, it's the better team that night that wins. You saw the ribbon on the lapel of uh, Roy Williams. Of course, all the Big 12 teams still in memory of the lives lost, a tragedy for Oklahoma State earlier in the year. And the team also wearing those ribbons. Five men closing in on the ball. That's good defense. Heinrich off the jump stop. They're attacking the glass and forcing Syracuse into foul difficulty. Jeremy McNeil Syracuse now has three, Rick. Well, here's McNeil the difference in the two third. zones. Syracuse knows and realizes that Kansas can hit the perimeter three. So what they're doing is extending their defense, opening up the middle and the inside. Kansas is packing it in, not respecting Syracuse's perimeter game, and that's what's hurting the Orangemen right now. Selick coming back into the game. McNeil leaves with the three fouls. Selick also has two, so the Jayhawks doing a nice job of getting into the depth of this Syracuse team, and they're clearly not as deep a team as are the Jayhawks. 27 to 13, Kansas has been dominant in the first half. Largest lead of the afternoon. You see the hesitation. That's from the missed shot by Williams. He missed a few. Great shooters have to shoot the ball when they're open. He's 0 for 5 from the three-point line. That doesn't matter. The young man I coached in Florida, Billy Donovan, he go 0 for 11, he'll keep shooting. Williams, a floater. And most of his shots have been left short. Tentative. Syracuse on the offensive end. Boshi spotting up. Oh, the iron kind to Boshi in Kansas. Rattling halfway through the cylinder and back in. The lead is 17. Field goal shooting tells it all in our game summary, and uh, Kansas really taking it to the Syracuse zone. And you worked with uh, Jim Beheim when he got his first victory. Is that a shock treatment timeout? What is it? What's going through his mind right now? No, he's not an in-your-face type basketball coach. He'll stay calm and cool at all times. He'll tell his team, "Look, just take better shots. Relax. We'll make our comeback." Syracuse has only two field goals in the last 10 plus minutes. And you can really see the tentative nature, even there, a turnover. Shumpert just uh, made uncomfortable by the Kansas defense. Well, not to get o overly technical, but that's a matchup zone, unlike the 2-3 bumping zone that Syracuse plays, where there are a lot of gaps open. What Kansas is doing is getting the benefit of Syracuse's zone offense, but matching up man-to-man. Well, as you mentioned at the top, he'll very rarely, if ever, come out of the zone. He's down 17, even in the first half, sometimes that would indicate that it's time to run and jump, maybe press and get some points off of your defense. Uh, Jim Beheim knows all too well that we're still very early in this game. No question about it. A lot of time left in this game, but they have to start getting the confidence up of Deshaun Williams. Look at that. No points in the last 426. And... Uh, the eyes of the Syracuse players are a bit blazed at this stage. 
See, again, he was open on the perimeter for the three, would not take it. He tried to drive it into a maze and find something. Fortunately, he did. Shumpert now has seven. He scored half of the Syracuse points in this game. What I do right now as a basketball coach next time out, I tell Deshaun Williams, you either shoot the ball, I don't care if you go 0 for 17, shoot it and make it or I'm taking you out of the game. You've always been more aggressive in your approach, particularly in NCAA tournament play. Uh, everyone has to step it up, and, and you've always felt that if you turn it into a possession game, then you can be asking for trouble. Not pressure, but stress comes into play. I like to take more risk, make it more up-tempo, the players get more relaxed. Here's the bumping zone. Nice defensive work there by Damone Brown, taking it away from Gooden. Eighth turnover by the Jayhawks. And the runner for Deshaun Williams. Well, if the perimeter jumper won't go, get there off the bounce. He needed that. Maybe he'll get his confidence going. He's one for seven from the field. Collison. Gregory saved him there. It won't go down, and it's pulled away by Shepard. Shepard trying to create and the reach in will go against Kenny Gregory. You hear the, the statement so many Kenny's times that they're a well-coached team and he's an outstanding seven. coach and certainly there are many in this game. But when you watch a Roy Williams team at every phase of the game, they're fundamentally sound. The way they attack the zone, the way they organize their break, the way they get on the glass. He's truly one of the premier coaches in our game. He told us uh, prior to the game that he put together some clips of their run in 91 and 93. And uh, Preston Shumpert has been a huge force for the Syracuse team. And again, against UConn twice, he lit up Jimmy Calhoun's team. And he had 36 in that non-conference affair against DePaul. Well, he's a great one-on-one -on -one player. He understands the game, and he will not get rattled. Well, a 6 nothing run for Syracuse has closed the gap to 11. They were down 17 just moments ago. Let's see if Kansas can get to the inside of the zone. They're starting to shut it down. They're fearful of Boshi's three. They're looking to the high post. Let's see if they get it inside. There it is. He'll look opposite and take the three. Heinrich. Gooden fouled by Selick. Well, apparently not. They did not call it. He went open over the back. He's upset that you see the reaction from the Syracuse bench. They, too, are surprised. No whistle. We'll be back. Night Talk Show, one legendary stand-up comic, no two-drink minimum. Dave welcomes Jerry Seinfeld, performing all-new stand-up, Wednesday on The Late Show. Here comes the penetration on the zone. Boshi dribbles to the middle, he looks high to Gooden. Gooden looks to the inside, fakes the inside, goes to Heinrich on the perimeter, and he gets the three-point shot. He gives the look inside first, he freezes the wing defense, they challenge late. And then the ability to get on the offensive boards doesn't hurt either. Syracuse has to block out in the interior of the zone. There's the alley-oop. Oh, Heinrich almost put that oop in the cylinder for Gooden. Drew will easily take credit for it. Set play coming out of the timeout. Shumpert on the wing. You know, he takes with his shot, Rick. He takes the ball back just a bit. Like the old, uh, they used to call it in the 70s, the days of the triplets, the Arkansas jumper. Where you take the, the shot all the way back behind uh, your temple and the back of your head. It's a rather unorthodox shot that Shumpert has, but uh, it is very effective. And, and the way you described it, the Arkansas jumper, that's yep. quite unorthodox. There's not a person in America that knows what you mean. <laughs> That was Brewer, Delph, you know, those guys. Again, I'm showing my I'm showing my uh, my age again. But then again, I'm happy to report that despite your hair color, you still are three years older than me. <laughs> no hair color. <laughs> <laughs> this hair loss. <laughs> Here's Selick. Griffin. Oh, good dribble drive to create for Deshaun Williams. Oh, and a needed. much needed three. Much needed. That'll lift his confidence. 
Ten-point game. Seven in the game now for Deshaun Williams. And off the ball, Collison the foul. Coming up on singular at the half, Greg Dumble and Clark Kellogg. Boy, they're very busy. They'll keep you up to date on all the tournament news. Games yet to come up. All of that on singular at the half. Special K and Greg Gumbel. These three officials all look like they got their hair cut at the same place if you look out there <laughs> speaking about hair. Yeah, it's a little bit like Boshi, don't you think? Uh, Jeff Boshi allowed his hair to grow out just a bit. There's Duke Etzel, Dick Cartmel. Look like uh, guys who spent time in boot camp. Definitely. It's a dollar fifty special <laughs> or three for a dollar. <laughs> the other side of the Midwest region in Kansas City. Well, this is an interesting 3-6 matchup. Notre Dame, Ole Miss, Butler in Arizona. I'll tell you this. Rod Barnes deserves more credit for National Coach of the Year honors. People talk of Al Skinner very deservingly. But Rod Barnes' team was picked sixth in the SEC West, and they won that division in what was uh, RPI-wise the toughest conference in America. I agree wholeheartedly. They're trying to screen the weak side of the zone. They're running Boshi on the baseline. Now they'll go back to him. Great patience. He'll cut through again. Now they'll try to hit him. Opposite again. Active hands. There he is. Boshi. Shepard in traffic. Collison, yeah. nice tap to Chenoweth. And the foul against Selick. That'll be three on Billy. So he'll join Jeremy McNeil with three fouls each for the Archman here in the first half. Collison has a wonderful feel for the game. Yeah, he, he goes after the loose basketball. He knows Eric what Chenoweth is inside. Kansas. Makes the touch pass. America's Survivors on this Wednesday. Don't miss America's most watched show, Survivor, on a special night, Wednesday at 8, 7 Central on CBS. And today it's about survive and advance in the NCAA tournament. And for the Orangemen of Syracuse and the Kansas Jayhawks, uh, getting to the Sweet 16 is something that's not only wanted, it's expected by their fan base. 34-23, two minutes left in the opening half. Back to the 1-3-1 zone. You have to attack the baseline against the 1-3-1. The wing is not open. Pick and roll high. There's the opposite baseline. Good skip pass. Oh, wide open. Quick release by Williams there. It's almost as if he anticipated Collison coming over with the help. Well, that's what, that's what will be open. You have to look at the skip pass and screen the baseline. Now Deshaun Williams warming up, and in doing so, has kept the Orangemen in it. Ballard. Well, the one-time walk-on making a difference. Well, Dwayne lost sight of the ball and did not cover the skip pass. Shepard for three. And the offensive productivity picking up. He's a terrific basketball player. Good size for two guard. Small forward. Shumpert has 12 in the game. So he and Deshaun Williams getting back in it. You see the three-point shooting picking up. It was woeful early. They were one for eight at one point. They're looking down low to Collison. Now the ball on the floor. Foul spotted. Damone Brown reaching in. Picks up the personal. 25, Damone Brown, his third. And that's three on him. So McNeil, Brown, and Selick all with three Eric fouls for Jim Bayham. And uh, Eric Chinoweth at the free throw line. You know, I look over at that bench, Rick, and I see Bernie Fine, the longtime assistant. You began with him. Yes, we started a little cubicle together. Manly Fieldhouse in Syracuse, New York, where every day he would come into the office and cut out wedding pictures. <laughs> this went on for two months. I could not figure why he was doing it. Finally, I said, Bernie, what is with cutting out the wedding pictures? He said, well, I own an insurance company, and I'm sending them some information on how to gain insurance. <laughs> He would not leave me alone with life insurance until one day I finally said, okay, Bernie, I'll buy a policy. <laughs> well, it's good because term life after 45 is a little tougher to get. <laughs> <laughs> one of the reasons perhaps why he uh, stayed in Syracuse, if there were offers that he entertained early on in his career. Williams, great move, carving apart the Kansas defense. 39-31, he's hit four of his last six shots. Timeout, Jayhawks. 
39-31. Deshaun Williams began the game 0 for 6 from the floor, Rick. He's 4 for 4 since. And after trailing by as many as 17, the Orangemen making a strong move here in the last five minutes of the opening half to get back to within single digits. Knowing Jim, I'm sure he told Williams in the last timeout, shoot the basket. Here's their, their post, their trap out of the high post. They come out of a timeout with it. They surprise the man, get the potential three-point oh, play. they do! Griffin! And it's an intentional foul. Wow. Here it is. It's known as their 25. It's a top trap out of the 2-3 zone. Both men run at him. The wings come. Here's the steal. No way that's an intentional foul. No way that's an intentional foul. He's going for the strip of the basketball. That cannot be an intentional foul. I tell you, it was called from the backside, as you can see. And you know, they talk of hard foul. That's not even a hard foul. No, and they clearly, not only did he go for the ball, he got some of the ball. I get all over my player right now for, ma for making sure that he does not shoot the ball. That man got the shot off. Let's see it one more time. He goes to the basket. He goes for the strip. That is not a good call. Roy Williams right now is being extremely kind. Yes. I Watch him as he walks off the court at halftime. Mm -hmm. He will not be praising that official for that call. Well, remember, Roy Williams will soon be the chairman of the Rules Committee next year. Uh, Reggie McKenzie this year is the chairman of the Rules Committee, but Roy had a lot to do with the, the points of emphasis as a part of that committee being clean up post play and particularly hand checking along the perimeter. And obviously gets the, the ball possession back. And that's a big penalty to pay for an easy foul, not even a hard one. Well, what a productive trip this could be. An opportunity for Syracuse. How about if he knocks down a three? There it is. Not there. Pulled down by Gooden. Orangeman end on a 21-9 run to close the half. And uh, Roy just walks right past the officials. Nothing to say. That's surprising. 39-34, Jimmy Beheim's team making a run to close out this half. Let's go to Spitzer. Right, boy, you guys live by as much as 17 at one point. They've whittled it down to five. What do you tell your troops? We've got to get to the three-point shooter, especially Preston Summer. We can't let him make one pass and let him have an open three. We're playing more zone again than I'd like, but I think we have to because of our matchups. But we got to get to the three-point shooter. Fair enough. Good luck in the second half. Uh, politically correct, Roy Williams not mentioning that it's intentional. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of NCAA's basketball championship continues after this message. Greg Gumbel coming up. Basketball championship is sponsored by Chevrolet. Recreational Boating and Fishing Foundation. CDW. And by Questia.com. A 21 to 9 run in the last five minutes of the first half gives Syracuse a five point deficit. Earlier, Spencer Tillman spoke with Jimmy Beheim. Well, I'll tell you, coach, if you could bottle the last five minutes of that first half and carry over, you'd be in business. Well, we finally made some shots. You know, we know they're going to out rebound us. We just have to, we had to make some shots against their zone, and we got to be a little more aggressive defensively. Uh, but they're a big team, you know. We can't do anything about that. We're just going to have to battle them a little bit harder inside, but we got to knock down some shots. You know, Rick, we talked a little bit earlier about the, the X factor being Deshaun Williams. He missed his first six, made his last four, including two threes. That's when the Orangemen really warmed up. His confidence stepped up, took the big shot, but you have to understand, 30 to 12 on the backboard. Yeah. Kansas is dominating Syracuse with 10 offensive rebounds. Uh, you see the conversation David Hall and uh, Duke Etzel are having, along with Dick Cartmel, about uh, perhaps the events... Uh, that led to that intentional foul call, maybe an explanation over that. Well, what happened, one official came out with Roy Williams to explain, probably missed the call, which right. a good official will do. Then they called everybody over to explain, I'm not giving one official the advantage. Yeah. It was a blown call, but he did not make the shot when they came back out in possession. Look at those front court rebounds as we look at our halftime stats. Uh, Rick, you know, you heard Jim Beheim say there's nothing we can do about that. But uh, clearly there's something that can be done to offset that kind of statistical disadvantage. Well, you're not going to have one of the weaknesses of playing a 2-3 zone is you're not going to have perfect blockout position. You need the guards to come down from the top and get a piece of their big men. Every time you let the ball come to the interior of the zone, you're going to have poor rebounding problems. 
Uh, David Hall has uh, ended the conversation. And the interpretation should have been, uh, they're saying, uh, should have been uh, two free throws should have been shot, and it was correctable until the second live ball. And now, of course, it's not correctable. So that's what the conversation's about. But uh, clearly, there also has to be some measure, Rick, of uh, uh, accountability for an emotional call that was incorrect. I don't have a problem with that because it's the correct call. Yeah. Because, listen, he, he just shoots one free throw in the three-point play. It was not an intentional foul. So by being incorrect and making the wrong call, we got the correct call in the end. So you can't give him the extra free throw because it was the incorrect call. Well, Syracuse's board problems, by the way, they were out to rebound it in 19 of 32 games. And uh, certainly, they know they're going to be out rebounded today, but as you heard Jim Beheim tell Spencer Tillman, it's just a question of the total number. Collison in traffic. Stays with it, counted and a foul. And McNeil picks That's up number four, 18 seconds deep into the second half. Again, the offensive rebound leads to the three-point play. The pass to the baseline, he looks to the cut it down low, pump fakes, misses the shot, gets it back, three-point play. If Syracuse doesn't win this game, they're going to look to the offensive glass as the major focus to why they did not win it. The foul was actually given to Damone Brown rather than Jeremy McNeil, and that's important because Brown, much more of an offensive force, but he too had three, so four fouls for Damone Brown. And Jim Beheim is arguing the point right now that they got the wrong man on the yeah, foul. I agree. I, I think I thought it was McNeil that had made contact. The Syracuse comes on number 34. Now they're changing Jeremy it. McNeil, now they're changing it. First. Yes. So they have now changed it to Jeremy McNeil, which was correct. And uh, Roy Williams even more concerned with the proceedings. But uh, that's a big difference for Syracuse offensively, Rick. Here's Shepard. Does not go. I mean, Damone Brown is a must on the floor in the he second half. He has to be on the court. These three officials are communicating well, though. They, they own up to their mistakes. They communicate well. Very, very difficult game to play in, coach in, and certainly officiate. The dribble penetration in the strip. Kansas gets back quick. Williams. Oh, the strength of Deshaun Williams on display in that sequence. 41-36, just a minute deep into the second half of our game. Syracuse has to stop the ball from going to the baseline as well as going to the interior. They'll keep Boshi in, mo in motion right now. He'll move away. There it is. Nice high-low work between Gooden and Collison. See, they're so tall, they see over the zone. So that's why you have to stop them from going inside. Easier said than done. Yes. It reminds me to some extent, uh, really, Rick, of what you were able to do in the days at Kentucky when Scott Pageant was with that team. High-low action between them. A nice move by Griffin, unable to finish. And the frustration foul. Didn't need that one. Here's the entry pass to the baseline. When you get the ball to the baseline, you run the big man right down the middle. There it is. Goes to the baseline. Pump fakes. Gets fouled. You either go to the baseline and down into the middle, or you go to the middle and down to the baseline. That's their attack. 43-36, seven-point lead. These... Uh, Two powers on the glass. It's been all Kansas, 22 to six overall. Syracuse is 14 and one when Demond Brown grabs 10 or more rebounds. Today he only has four, and there's Gooden again. McNeil, nothing he could do to stop him with the four fouls. That time the post play has stepped out of the lane, faced up his man, and looked down into the post play, treated it like a man-to-man -man situation. Syracuse has no answers defensively for his own attack. Tough pass. Last touch by KU's Jeff Boshi. Now we talked about the foul difficulty. In Syracuse, uh, deeper than some think, but certainly not as deep as Kansas. Brown Selick, who's foul prone, just uh, checking back into the game now for McNeil. He has three. The unfortunate thing, this Kansas team should be played man-to-man -man rather than zone, but that's Syracuse's staple. Boy, what a great shot by Williams. Off the wrong foot. Banks it in with Loft because he had to arch it over the tall towers of the Jayhawks. He's six for his last six. You can see the 1-3-1 one, one offensive attack with the high post man, the man running the baseline. Now they're packing it in more, which might open up a three-point shot. There it is. He'll look down inside and he travels. 
Control to the Orangemen. 13 turnovers now committed by Kansas. And most of those coming late. And you can see the urgency with Roy Williams. Uh, you know, those, those unforced errors are real problems for coaches like Williams. Some of them for Kansas of late have been unforced errors. Williams, first miss in seven tries. The Orangemen have only turned it over by contrast five times in this game. One of the reasons why they've been able to stay in this game. Gooden over Selick. And again, he and Shumpert involved. As Shumpert wanted to get that foul, but he's not going to give it to him. Billy Selick picks up his fourth. Shumpert actually raised his arm to try to bail out his partner. But uh, Dick Cartmel would have uh, nothing to do with it. So that's four on Billy Selick. They are so in sync with their passing. They ball fake very well. There it is to the baseline. Gooden with the strong move to the bucket. Drew Gooden, El Cerrito High School of Richmond, California. As you see, Selick now with four. McNeil has fouled out nine times. Selick has fouled out seven times, and both are in danger of losing their eligibility with 16-35 and counting in this game. I can assure you, if Kansas wins this game, their next opponent will not be sitting in a zone. Man to man by Kansas. They felt they couldn't match up with Syracuse's quickness. Let's see if Shumper could take him one on one. Griffin working on Gregory, pick and roll. Oh, the finger roll won't fall, and Gregory pulls it down. Numbers in the favor of Kansas. Heinrich. Well, the pump fake and the deuce. Five in the game for Kirk Heinrich, the Sioux City, Iowa native. Gives Kansas a double-digit lead, 49-38. You look at the Midwest region second round, Rick, with all of the upsets in Boise and San Diego and the Thursday-Saturday regions, uh, we've held serve here, and this by far and away the most marquee matchup of teams known to be dominant in college basketball in second round action. This is more of a, a round of 16 kind of uh, meeting that we're having between Syracuse and Kansas. No question, but Charlotte will stay competitive in their game against Illinois. That's anyone's game. Joby Thomas and Guevara, outstanding outside shooters to go along with uh, perhaps the best freshman in the country, Rodney White. Illinois will have to deal with all of that. The 49ers trying to pan for gold in the NCAA tournament yet again under Bobby Luke. And Deshaun Williams' hot streak continues. Interesting enough, Kansas goes to man-to-man, -to -man and Syracuse is still basically running their zone offense. Boshi. Again, Collison, too much strength. Gregory, fouled by Griffin, and that's three on him. Too much size. Too much size. Your wingspan is up there. All they're doing is reaching. You have to lay a body on the man, whether it's zone or man. Syracuse's cool hand Luke now in danger of foul difficulty. You look at our tournament summary. Uh, amazing to think that some of the powerhouses uh, advanced through round number two as they restored decorum. Yesterday's heroes, Rick, I point to Jason Williams and Tayshawn Prince. Those are easy ones. You figure that they're going to play well. But how about Marvin O'Connor? His 37 keeping uh, Phil Martelli's team in it against Stanford last Phil, night. Phil Martelli has a habit of coming up with great backcourt players. Marvin O'Connor is just another one to add to the collection. You see that foul difficulty that has uh, Jim Beheim so perplexed. Selick and McNeil with four, Brown and Griffin now each with three. And Boshi has his howitzer loaded. 52-40, Jayhawks by a dozen. The interesting thing to, to watch is whether Syracuse will come out of their zone. And they didn't in the first half, and uh, when Williams got hot, they clawed their way back in. Shumpert, well, he is almost a contortionist in terms of... Uh, taking it to the rack, and then initiating the contact. He threads the needle. He really does. It's not an opening there. He slices on through. Heinrich picked up the foul, his second. Like to see Syracuse come with some full court pressure here. 
Tonight on 60 Minutes, how does a Florida bean picker get to live like a king? Well, by going to law school and becoming one of America's richest lawyers tonight on 60 Minutes. Speaking of Florida, that's where Preston's from, the Fort Walton Beach area. The uh, peninsula there between uh, Gulf Shores, Alabama no press. and Perdido Key. 52-42, they do back off. He knows his zone, he has confidence in it. Plenty of time left. You have 15 minutes. The game is close. When you think about it, Rick, most coaches would tell you they go to zone to protect their players from foul trouble. It's just the opposite here. Chenoweth gets loose underneath. And the lead back to 12. Well, if you're going to trap the baseline, you have to stop it from turning the corner. You have to put your foot almost out of bounds and not let him slice to the bucket. Brown. He hit the rim. The defensive player grabbed the rim oh, to be two points. Selick with a remarkable save out to Deshaun Williams. And another opportunity for the Orangemen. These possessions becoming even more important now. That shot a tough one and challenged by Bochi. And a pick by Shepard. And now a three. Off the front iron. And the pick again. Oh, how about that? Just quicker to the ball in that sequence than Nick Collison. Shumper was willing to shoot another three. Well, they've been struggling on the board. Why not get a few of them off the floor? Kenowith is grabbing the pick, trying to prevent him from setting the screen. First foul against Eric Chenoweth. His first team second. Raises the ire of his coach, Roy Williams. For Syracuse, number 13, Queth Dwayne enters. Queth Dwayne has now come into the game. So he joins up with Griffin, Selick, Shumpert, and Deshaun Williams on the floor for the Orangemen. Damone Brown takes the seat. That first round shooting versus today. Uh, the vice grows tighter. The rim gets uh, more difficult. On the wing, not there for Selick. Out of bounds, last touch by KU. Well, we've been down here almost a fortnight. Well, they're trying to run baseline screens for Shumpert, coming off either a single screen or what we call a staggered screen. He'll take this three. Up top, Shumpert not there. Finally, Collison rips one down and holds on to it. Shumpert's now two of nine from downtown. Heinrich? That's an offensive foul. Out of bounds, it'll be controlled to Kansas. There was a no call in that sequence, but uh, yeah, he def definitely pressed it, didn't he? That was not the breeze that knocked him down. Heinrich just put his head down, trying to draw the foul. Certainly was an offensive foul. Can't be a no call. Boshi, too strong. Shepard, the rebound. Syracuse needs a bucket here. Comes off the pick and roll. He'll try to get in the lane and get fouled. Chenoweth coming over again. Picks up the foul. Two quick ones against Eric Chenoweth. The pick and roll in transition is a great play to run. The hedge is not in position to come out on the man. That's the best way to get penetration. Shumpert and Williams have now 32 of Syracuse's 42 points. John Williams is cold, he's hot, now he's cold again. Uh, pretty much embodies it in today's game his entire season. Very streaky shooter, Deshaun Williams. High to low. Chenoweth. Unstoppable up there. Ten in the game for Eric. Good hands, good touch. Most of his points have come at the line. He's only gotten two field goals to fall. Six for six from the free throw line. A double pick and roll. Damone Brown challenging the bigger Jayhawks, and he gets to the free throw line. Kenny Gregory reaching in. Heinrich will get whistled for the foul. Both Gregory, he and Heinrich Gregory third, in position four. to pick it up. The lead catapults back to 14 for the Jayhawks. 76-77 Archman. Now the long lost coach to the left. That is uh, Rick Patino. Now I know the guy in the middle is Bayheim because of the hairline. Who who else is in there? Roosevelt Bowie, Lewis Orr, I believe Jimmy. Don't call me Buck Williams. <laughs> 
Those were the days, right? <laughs> and no you, question. you left a honeymoon to take that job. To go to Syracuse, New York. <laughs> That's how sick a person I am. <laughs> no, great place, great people. And immediately Joanne knew what she was in for for the next 25 years. <laughs> nice dump down to Damone Brown. Chenoweth takes it out of there. Well, the inability to finish, and Brown only one for six in the game. Scrum. Brown trying to keep it alive. Can't get up. You got to stay down and pass it. Yep. And it's uh, Dwayne that finally comes out of there with it. They have numbers. Brown again. Nice jump stop, and again does not finish. He's taking his eyes off the basket, making outstanding moves, but taking his eyes off the basket. You have to finish it by keeping your eyes focused on the rim. He's one for seven in this game. Second chance points all with KU. 15 to nothing. The offensive board work has been outstanding for the fourth seed from Lawrence, Kansas. Syracuse is packing in the zone more. Should open a three-point shot on the perimeter. Here's the fade screen, looking for the three. Now it'll look high-low. Genoa takes it to the rack, gets the contact. Syracuse foul number 13. Goes Quest against Quest Wayne. First, team's fifth. Young man whose family and uh, he escaped from Sudan back in 84. Younger sister now Derek at Georgetown. Two for Kansas. In fact, his family's still doing quite a bit of work to help those that are impoverished back in the, in the native Sudan. Well, we touched about uh, Kansas's difficulty, particularly in the second round. But when you get matched up like this, that's the importance of seeding, isn't it? No question about it. Upset with by Rhode Island, certainly. It's all a matter of not only seedings, but how you're playing. Right now, Kansas is playing right at the right time. Yeah. If they're peaking at the right time. Certainly, Tennessee was not peaking at the right time. You know, getting to the line is important for Syracuse. Right now, Kansas is getting there many more times. Syracuse, a 72% free throw shooting team in Big East play. They were 7-0 when getting to the line more than their opposition. 5-7 and seven when not. And right now, the Jayhawks hit 24 free throws. A real difference maker in this game. Back to 16, widest was 17 in the first half for KU. McNeil rejected by Gooden. Rejected again. The matchup zone's giving him trouble because of the size of Kansas. The second half really, Rick, mirrors the first half where the Jayhawks got off to the quality start and then Syracuse made the run in the last five minutes. A 19 to 8 start for the Jayhawks here in the second half. Syracuse must get a stop to get back in this game. Three-point shot. Heinrich. Largest lead of the day. 61-42. And at what point do you pull off the well, zone? Now it's a timeout. I have to believe he's coming out of it right now. Let's see when he comes out of this timeout. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed approximately $8 million to the general scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Tim Brando, Rick Patino, Spencer Tillman. Round two here in Dayton, Ohio. Home of the Wright brothers, and it's the Jayhawks uh, flying high in this region against Syracuse in the second half. A 22-8 start. Here's Shepard. Halfway down the cylinder and out. He must feel as if there's a lid on top of that basket from three-point range. Now well, they stay in the zone. Syracuse really doesn't believe in coming out of the zone with this basketball team. That's their philosophy, but with survival on the line, you may have to come out of it and play man. At this point, you need a change. It's not going your way. Tipped and finally recovered by Damone Brown and the quick outlet to Griffin. And uh, foul as uh, Heinrich was trying to check Griffin, and he picks up his third. Riding it with his body on the way to the hoop. Well, it'll actually be his fourth foul. But don't forget, access live team stats from every tournament game through this interactive telecast available on Ultimate TV. And Brett Ballard checks into the game for Heinrich, having picked up his fourth. So what I'd like to see Syracuse do, is, and they do have a good full court press, is put some 94-foot pressure on, then drop back into the zone. I don't necessarily say you have to come out of your staple defense but add something to it. 
Williams splits the double team and the finish. Up, here they come with the full court pressure. Good move by Jim Beheim. Now he needs the back tip on the steal. Jeremy McNeil is playing in the back of that press with four fouls. Gregory, a jump hook over him. That's the problem for McNeil playing with four fouls. Difficult to challenge. And you'll notice Kansas plays north and south, attacks the bucket. Does not bring it out and set it up. You want to press us, we're going to come through it and look for the layup. 63-44. This uh, Jayhawks attack has been balanced. Boshi with 13, Gooden with 11, Chenna with 12, Heinrich 8. Oh, Gregory! Uh, flying Walinda through the lane. Sixty-five forty-four. The lead up to twenty-one. You sense some urgency with Syracuse offensively, Rick. Well, yeah. not only you sense it, they have to be urgent right now. They need some turnovers, they need some threes, they need some second shots. Timeout. One of the more athletic plays you'll see. Kenny Gregory playing before home folks, a native of Columbus, showing his independence off the window. You look at our game summary, and Rick, going back to those uh, keys of influence for both Syracuse and Kansas, so far Syracuse has not been able to accomplish what they wanted in terms of closing off rebounding and negating that front court for well, KU. Too many second shots, too much interior passing, too big, too strong in the front court. Yeah, and obviously the balance. I mean, you think about uh, what Boshi's able to do to go along with uh, Kenny Gregory, as well as Kirk Heinrich. I mean, Boshi with 13, Gooden and Chenoweth both in double digits. Collison and Gregory, four guys in double figures as you get this slam from McNeil basketball coming out of the timeout. This is a very young Kansas basketball team gelling at the right time. If you're a college basketball coach and looking for a game next year, do not call Kansas. <laughs> That's right. And a foul spotted. That one will go against uh, Queth. Well, I'm not sure. It might be against Boshi. It's Jeff Boshi. You see it right there in front of you as he threw Shumpert down to the hardwood. And that'll get Preston to the free throw line. Well, you'll see a full court Preston press Shumpert now almost on every possession, every made basket. Probably a little zone trap out of the 2 3 zone. Hasn't been mentioned much because he had been shooting so well, particularly in the first round win over Hawaii, but Shumpert had that corneal abrasion in the Big East semifinal. Very painful, wearing a non-prescription contact to protect it a bit, but not having the kind of day today that he had anticipated or needed. Two for 10 from three-point range for Shumpert, so the Jayhawks' defense at the three-point line against him has been very good. They're always looking opposite. Loose ball, they tried to get it into Gooden's hands. Three on three, and here's Griffin over Chenoweth. Using the glass, 65-49. Ballard on the floor along with Bochy, Gooden, Chenoweth, and Gregory, and Shumpert reaches in. And it's tied for the Working foul. Three, what I like about Kansas, even though they have a lead, they're not looking at the, at the clock right now, wanting to wanting it to run out. What they're doing is attacking the basket against their full court press, attacking the zone. The mistake people make is they say, we got a 15, 16, 17-point lead, clock run out. You can't do that in the NCAA tournament. Allow the other team to come back in. Gooden going reversal. Yeah, one of the true anomalies of this game Statistically, at turnovers, Rick, five for Syracuse, 18 for Kansas, and yet we have a, an 18-point lead in the game for the Jayhawks. It's rare that you see that kind of discrepancy in turnovers, and uh, the team that's given up 13 more ahead by 18 points. Off of another turnover, Shepard rejected by Gooden. Boy, can the big fella run the floor. Great hustle coming back. Boshi steps in, delays it. They don't, they don't give you an easy bucket. They're going to step in. They're going to run back, try to block the shot. Just do. A... 
67-49. The lead is 18. Just over six minutes left. Damone Brown not there. Gregory the rebound. Watch not a half foot trap. A little touch pass to Gooden. Collison. This is a clinic. This is a basketball clinic. They throw bounce passes at the right time. They hit the baseline to the middle at the right time. But Collison's touch dish was uh, mom's Sunday best in this NCAA tournament. Williams off the front rim. Control to Boshi. Here they go. They have numbers down the court. Boshi will look up and find someone. This is really turning into a very impressive performance by the fourth seed. Gregory, a high riser. Now you have to come out of this zone and go man to man. They're picking it apart. The Syracuse players are getting dejected. Jim Beheim will change and come out of the zone. Timeout, and it's Rock Chalk Jayhawk in Dayton. Tonight on 60 Minutes, how does a Florida bean picker get to live like a king? by going to law school and becoming one of America's richest lawyers tonight on 60 Minutes, followed by an all-new touch by an angel, then Academy Award winner Louis Gossett Jr. and Robert Urick star in the CBS Sunday movie For Love of Olivia. It's all here. Don't miss it tonight on CBS. Sometimes a lack of depth helps a team because they get so cohesive with six or seven players, they all know what each, each other will do on the basketball court, and that's what's happened to Kansas this year. McNeil knocked that one away. Out of bounds to Kansas. Well, the team that uh, the Jayhawks could not solve in the Big 12, Iowa State, got an early exit, courtesy Hampton. KU lost twice to Larry Eustace's team, and there's Gooden taking it to the hole, and yet another foul spotted underneath. You'll see the philosophy of attacking pressure. They'll go up the sideline, back to the middle, look opposite on the break. What does it remind you of? Their zone offense. They take their zone offense, and that's their full court press offense. Drew Gooden at the line, shooting one and one for Kansas. Gooden at the line after Alan Griffin picked up his fourth. You think in some measure, too, the early foul trouble uh, caused uh, Syracuse to perhaps play a little soft underneath once Kansas got inside that zone? No, I believe that Kansas is having a superior day. Yeah. There's, they have superior talent, and today they're a better basketball team. 17 points, 13 boards on six of nine shooting for Drew Gooden. You think uh, Roy Williams is happy that wrist is healthy? He has been outstanding. Griffin won't go. I'll go back to the zone defense by Kansas, which is not going to be talked about. Obviously, their four. offense is going to be talked about. Their front court play will be much discussed. I like the fact that they played excellent zone defense gave Syracuse problems shooting the ball, wouldn't allow it to come inside, and a major catalyst to their fast track. Jeremy McNeil. Nick Collison picked up the foul. Ball. Much to Roy's chagrin, and Jeremy McNeil at the line. 73-49, a blowout, a four-point to five-point game at halftime. Jayhawks just ripped Syracuse's zone apart in the second half. McNeil the rebound, quick outlet to Griffin. Damone Brown has had a horrible day. Griffin can't find one from deep. There's McNeil on the glass, and he's fouled. Syracuse is a team 4 of 24 Jayhawks foul from three-point range, only 17%. Uh, Gooden picks up the foul, a ninth team foul against KU. Jeremy McNeil shooting Kansas two. has a good defensive philosophy. They don't give up an easy bucket. They're going to foul you aggressively if you get inside what I call the arc right around the basket. Rick, over time, and I know you, you were never known for your patience, okay? But let's face it, you wanted that national title, the brass ring, as uh, desperately as any coach in America. For Roy Williams and others like him, I, I know Jim Beheim's uh, attitude is a little more laid back, but for Roy, uh, do you want it more the later in life uh, when you know you've been there as many times as you have, or do you want it uh, just as much as you did uh, from year one? I don't think you look at it that way. You coach each team differently looking at your personnel and how you're going to coach them. The NCAA tournament, you understand it. You peak at the right time, you'll have a shot at it. Collison, all oh, around the rim and in. Roy Williams has a shot at it this year, legitimate shot. I don't think there's a whole lot of pressure on this basketball team. I think it's bothered some of his teams before because they weren't great shooting teams. Well, interestingly, he's in a region where some would think uh, the number one seed, Illinois, is a bit vulnerable. 
Uh, they play, of course, in our next game with Charlotte. They had a ma masterful performance against Northwestern State in the 116 game yesterday. Turnover by Dwayne. The lead all the way up to 25. Seeds are holding form in Dayton even through the second round. Kansas up by 25. Coming up next, CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four continues. The number of outstanding games, Indiana State against the Zags, Butler, Arizona, Temple, Florida. Talk about zones, contrasting styles, all of that coming up. So stay tuned, and there's Gregory counted in the foul. Again, they advance the ball up the floor to the wing. Wing passes it to the middle, middle dumps it down. This is fundamental basketball at its best. Now he looks away, gets the finish. Syracuse is just a little slow reacting. McNeil fouls out of the game. That's the first Orangeman to be removed from the game because of foul trouble. Fouled out of nine games earlier this year. Selick fouled out of seven. And Gregory, who has been outstanding in the last five minutes, 77 to 50. Selick, pretty good look to Shumpert the there as he cuts to the basket. 77-52. This will go down as one of the largest rebound margin differences in NCAA tournament history. Kansas knew that they would have an edge there, and so did Jim Beheim, but not to the extent in which they had it. Well, the zone defense leaves the offensive glass naked at times, and that's one of the weaknesses of playing zone. You don't get pure blockout position. But you can really raise a point that uh, it was Kansas's zone that was more effective. Now let's take a look at the CBS Sportsline stat of the game. And it's just that. Look at that. 51 to 20, that rebound differential. St. John's by 35 and 51. Notre Dame by 42 and 58. And you see Kansas by 31 in 2001 going back in history. That's just pure talent. Yep. It's a big time talent differential. But this front court is one of the best in college basketball. They pass, they handle, they face up well. The backcourt is steady. This is a, a basketball team right now that I would not want to play against in the NCAA tournament. For complete tournament coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. Lead is 25. And they empty the benches. James Theus has come onto the floor now for Syracuse, along with Dwayne and Selick. Kansas going to its uh, bench as well, getting number 22, Jeff Carey into the game. Junior from Camden, Missouri. Space the floor and uh, run it out. And for KU, a great opportunity as a number four seed to emerge. This tournament has already seen four, two number four seeds knocked out. Tim, this is one of the best coaching jobs by Jim Beheim probably in the last 10 years. Uh, I am not being disparaging against his talent. The talent's good, it's young but it's probably one of the weaker basketball teams he's coached at Syracuse. For Kansas, number three, Brett Ballard. Let's take a look at our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Deshaun Williams, 10, 20 30. points, three assists. Kept them in the game, particularly in the first half run. Drew Gooden, a double-double for him on six of 10 shooting. And why is Kansas so good late? Number zero, Drew Gooden. Oh, 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 oh. Jeff Bosey. Bosey. The clock winding down, the nylon song. <laughs> a little backstreet boy didn't even crack a smile. <laughs> Dwayne. Well, Kansas's entire team was awakened at 5.40 in the morning with a fire alarm. Some guys were complaining, feeling cheated out of rest. Well, they played well under duress, without question. Gooden, out of bounds, and the foul against Gregory. And we're going to go ahead and uh, advance Kansas into the round of 16. They'll face the winner of the Fighting Illini and Charlotte 49ers game that will be coming Kansas up later here 20, in Gregory Dayton, Ohio. Third. Now, the Illini will match up well with Kansas. Charlotte will not. But, but Illinois on the backboard, they'll more than hold their own against Kansas. That's an excellent matchup. Even though Charlotte has some size, Rick, their size is more lean than that of Illinois, particularly the... The Illinois guards, they are very physical. Charlotte is a three-point shooting team, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. Ah! 
You didn't have a fire alarm in our hotel. I slept through it. If, I don't know if you did or not. No, Tim, basically, after four days of working with you, my ears have been killing me. Um, and I just look in the mirror and I try to speak, see what it's like. Uh, you see Kenny Gregory getting uh, congratulated along with Collison. <laughs> well, you're used to that coaching huddle. You know, that's a dictatorship. This is a democracy here in television. Not anymore. With today's modern athlete, those dictatorships are gone. <laughs> Carey, dumping it down. Harrison. Lewis Harrison, the junior from Kansas City. Boy, what an impressive win this has got to be for Kansas going into the round of 16. Well, they're playing great basketball. This is back-to-back -back games with perfect execution. Jim Beheim's team just did not have the overall talent to stay with them. Shumpert, a long last to three. That's just his third of the day. And it's 85 to 58. Zerby trying to recover that one, but out of bounds off of Theus of Syracuse. The Orangemen go uh, deep into their bench. We all know the tremendous loyalty of Jim Beheim. 600 wins at one school. Mm -hmm. Roy Williams turning down his alma mater, North Carolina, to stay at Kansas and stay with his kids. He not only has an outstanding team this year, he comes back with a super team next year. Rick, this will be Syracuse's worst defeat in tournament history by far. Their previous was in 1977 against uh, Cedric Cornbread Maxwell and uh, University of North Carolina Charlotte at that time. I remember it well in Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. It was uh, Lee Rose's period, you might recall. Lee Rose got uh, North Carolina, Charlotte, as well as Purdue to a Final Four on Lester's team back in 1980. 87-58. McClanahan into the game along with uh, Greg Davis for Syracuse. I don't think I've seen better execution in back-to-back -back games from a team in a long time as Kansas just put forth in their last two efforts. Well, they really did. And I know you were very impressed with Cal State Northridge. Uh, that demolition was uh, something to cheer about if you're a KU fan because you were very high on the Matador. Cal State Northridge can flat out play. They beat UCLA at UCLA, and Kansas came in and was never a contest. Well, Bobby Braswell's name is going to surface along with many others. We've talked about some of the openings that are out there. Rumors abound in Tennessee that uh, Jerry Green's job may be in jeopardy and something may be done there by the middle of next week. I cannot believe that. Four straight NCAA appearances. Tennessee administration has way too much class for that. Here's Burns, and that's it. It's all over. And the road to the Final Four will go from Dayton to San Antonio in the Midwest region for Roy Williams. 87-58, our final score for Rick Pitino and Spencer Tillman. Tim Brando saying so long. From Dayton, Brett Gumbel will be back from New York when we come back in just a moment. Greg Gumbel in New York, first game of the day is complete, and the Kansas Jayhawks most impressive with an 87-58 win over Syracuse. Here's what's coming up. Everybody ticketed for Memphis, Indiana State, and Gonzaga will send you off to Memphis. Everybody else will head to Kansas City for Butler and Arizona. Those of you looking for Temple, Florida, and Charlotte, Illinois, we will get you to the tips of your game as they come around. That's happening next after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Chevrolet, EMC, Invesco, and by Pepsi One. Welcome back to our studios. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. More basketball coming up, but the game you just saw, Kansas annihilating the Orange Men of Syracuse, 87 to 58. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of this game. Kansas forward Nick Collison will work inside and work hard, too, for the layup, and the Jayhawks have an 11-point lead. And then Kenny Gregory, here he is on the weak side against the defense, working his way clean for a shot, 63-44 Jayhawks, and then Kenny Gregory high-rising with the finger roll. 
65 44 just Seahawks. like special k used to do and then gregory continues the big play with the big dunk and kansas boy talk about jim Beheim going from up high to way down low number 600 last time out and now his worst tournament loss ever uh and you know the way kansas dominated on the boards no wonder it happened. They've got a terrific front line. Collison, Chen with good, and Kenny Gregory, who we saw in those highlights, is often overlooked, but he plays much bigger than the 6 6. And when Syracuse did not start the game making shots, it really put them in a bind. Quick thought on the games coming up, Clark. In Kansas City, number 10, Butler, number 2, Arizona. I think Arizona's playing too well for Butler to pull an upset there. Temple, Florida, that could be a surprise if Temple shoots it well. And then Charlotte, Illinois, I think Illinois just has too much depth and firepower. All right, Kansas, impressive, and they'll take on the winner of Illinois against Charlotte and that is the game coming up in Dayton but everybody will start on Butler Arizona those of you going to New Orleans and Dayton will get you the tips of your game but Butler and Arizona coming up next